To get the most out of this video, make sure to pause and attempt each question on your own first. My explanations are not going to be nearly as helpful unless you do this. Let's start with an easy question in the English section. We've got a words and context question here, and it's asking us about the word spread. It was a huge zoo spread over numberless acres. For these types of questions, I do like to come up with an anticipation. I'm going to anticipate a synonym for spread in this case. It's being used as a verb. So I would say something like, honestly, I'm thinking of spread out, but um, laid out over numberless acres, something like that. I almost want to say like rolled out or something, laying out or rolled out. And that's going to be my anticipation. Now we'll go through and eliminate. Hidden definitely doesn't match. Discussed definitely doesn't match. Extended, yes, that totally matches uh, laid out or rolled out. Coded, no. So answer for that one, C. Let's move on to a medium question in the English section. This is going to be a command of evidence question. And for these, usually you want to go straight to the question and figure out, are we supporting the hypothesis or claim, or are we trying to refute the hypothesis or claim? In this case, it says directly support the hypothesis. From here, because it used the word hypothesis, I'm going to scour the passage and try to find a hypothesis. It says uh, researchers to hypothesize that that transposin family is tied to a species' capacity for advanced cognition. Okay, it says that transposin family. So I need to figure out what, what is being referred to. Um, so I'm going to go backwards a little bit to the last sentence. When the results of the molecular an animal known for its intelligence, uh, confirmation of a line. Okay, so a line transposin. So I'm looking for line transposin tied to advanced cognition. That's what I'm looking for in my answers. Do I know what line transposa means? I have no idea. Does it matter? It doesn't seem to matter right now. Let's take a look. A, the line transposin in these two genomes is active in an octopus brain structure that functions similarly to the human hippocampus. Okay, so I actually remember that the hippocampus is responsible for advanced cognition, but if you read this answer and you weren't quite sure, or if you went through and you noticed that there was no mention of advanced cognition, you might want to scour for the hippocampus. And indeed, it says hippocampus, brain structure that supports complex cognitive process. So we can think of that as advanced cognition in our answer choices. Anyway, it says that the, the line transposin in these two genomes is active during some advanced cognition. So that seems like it kind of lines up. B says the human genome contains multiple transposins from the line family that are all primarily active in the hippocampus. Okay, so that also seems to line up. A consistent number of copies of line transposins is present across the genomes in most octopus species with few known corruptions. So that one does not mention the hippocampus, which means we don't get the advanced cognition that we're looking for. And then D... These two have smaller brains than humanoids do, but their genomes contain sequence from a wider variety. Again, it's not mentioning the hippocampus or advanced cognition, so we can get rid of D. So between B and A, what's the difference? B says the human genome contains these transposins from the Lyme family that are active in the hippocampus, but the hypothesis was that the transposin family is tied to, and maybe I should have underlined this as well, a species capacity for advanced cognition. So B is just talking about humans, whereas A says the line transposin from these two is active in an octopus brain structure that functions similarly to the human hippocampus. So because we're getting a crossover between octopus and human, that seems to better reflect a species capacity for advanced cognition rather than just the human capacity for advanced cognition. So for that reason, I'm going to go with A. All right, let's do one more English question. This is going to be a hard English question. And here we have an inference 
or inference questions, I suggest starting with the last sentence. So the last sentence says, indeed, the two sentences reported similar accounts of a vertebrate, plant, and algal species, suggesting that blank. Working backwards here, we have the word indeed. So indeed points to showing an example of whatever came before. So let's go back. It says researchers' decisions on such matters can be highly consequential. So let's go ahead and read through this. We have uh, Marta Colon colleagues, Mediterranean Sea Biodiversity Census reported approximately 17,000 species. 17,000 species, nearly double the report in uh, Carlo Bianchi and Ca Ca Carla Mori's 2000 census. So we have a, a big discrepancy here, a difference only partly attributable to the description of new invertebrate species in the interim. Okay, so we know there, there's this discrepancy and it's only partly attributable to the description of new invertebrate species. And right now I'm thinking something like this is not the only, not the only cause, something like that. Another factor is that morphological variability of microorganisms is poorly understood compared to that of vertebrates. Okay, so the other reason is microorganisms poorly understood, creating uncertainty about how to evaluate them. So uncertainty about how to evaluate. And to be clear, I don't know what these species are. A lot of these words I am not familiar with. I know they have something to do with biology, but you're going to see it doesn't really matter. Last sentence here says, researchers' decisions on such matters can therefore be highly consequential. So the decisions on such matters, that's going to be basically their decision on how to evaluate. Indeed, the two censuses reported similar accounts of vertebrate, plant, and algal species. So it's saying they had the same number of these other types of species, but I'm going to assume because they don't know how to evaluate microorganisms, my prediction here or my anticipation is going to be something along the lines of these two censuses, you know, had uh, differences in microorganisms. And that's why you had nearly double the number reported in one census compared to the other. So that's what I'm thinking. And I'm going to try to match that anticipation. And you'll see the pattern here for English, come up with an anticipation, try to match it. Cole and colleagues reported a much higher number of species due to inconclusion of invertebrate species that had not been described. No, we're looking for microorganisms. Some differences observed in microorganisms may have been treated as variations within species by these two, but treated as indicative of distinct species by these others. That seems like it could work. Based on what I said, Bianchi and Mori may have been less sensitive to the degree of morphological variation displayed with any typical species of microorganism than Call and colleagues were. That also seems to kind of line up with what I was saying, so I'll keep that one. The absence of clarity regarding how to differentiate among species of microorganisms may have resulted in Cole and colleagues underestimating the number of microorganism species. That one also mentions microorganisms, so I'm going to keep D as well. So we've got three answers left over. Let's start looking a little bit more closely here. I'm going to start with the one I just read with D. First, let's see if we can figure out if one of these is not true, because I remember one of them was double the other. So this one's saying Cole and colleagues underestimating. But if we go to the top here, it says theirs was nearly double. So theirs is actually supposed to be the smaller one, so we can get rid of D, which makes things easier. And going backwards here, Bianchi and Mori may have been less sensitive to the degree of morphological variation displayed. So that's the one that should be smaller. Less sensitive to the degree of morphological variation displayed within a typical species of microorganism than Cole and colleagues were. So that one, when it says they may have been less sensitive to the degree of variation displayed, it sounds like an actual error, but we're looking for more this uncertainty about how to evaluate them. So 
That one seems kind of biased. Uh, B says some differences observed in microorganisms may have been treated as variations within species by these two, but treated as indicative of distinct species by call and colleagues. So B, you see the language there, it says may have been treated differently, whereas C is saying they had a, a less sensitive to the degree displayed. So C is kind of pointing the finger saying you should have done it this way, but you didn't, whereas B is saying they just made different choices. And again, going back to the paragraph, it says there's a general uncertainty about how to evaluate them. So I don't want to point the finger at anyone. I'm going to get rid of C, and our answer is going to be B for this one. All right, moving on to math. Let's start with an easy question. This is going to be a linear inequality. And I see a bit of a word problem, so I'm going to start from the main question. Which inequality shows the relationship where x is total number of beads in the first container, y is the total number of beads in the second container? Cool. So knowing that I'm aiming for just the correct equation, I can look specifically for things that are going to get tied to x and y. So first container, 30%. So I should have 0.3x because 30% is 0.3. Second one, 0.7 are red. So um, 0.7y. And then together, the containers have at least 400 red beads. Okay, so if we add them together, so basically 0.3x plus 0.7y, I get at least 400 beads. So at least is going to be greater than or equal to. That way the lowest number is equal to, and that'll be 400. Okay, and then we can see that that's actually A. So we don't even have to eliminate answers. We, we have a perfect match. We're good. Our medium question here looks like a quadratic because I'm seeing x squared, x, 1. So we're following that whole ax squared plus bx plus c thing. And it's just asking us uh, which could be a value of x. So a lot of the time, a quadratic is going to have two solutions. And a, a quick way to deal with this would be to simply plug both of these into Desmos, um, I'm going to take a different route because I'm seeing something interesting. I know that to start simplifying this, I can subtract the top equation from the bottom equation. So I would get x squared plus x, and then I subtract the x plus 1. So x squared minus nothing would just be x squared. x minus x would be nothing. And then uh, 0 minus 1 would be minus 1. And I'm recognizing this as a difference of squares, a difference of squares being x squared minus some number. And the cool thing is this is always going to factor as x plus the constant, in this case 1, times x minus the constant, in this case 1. So I know that my answers are 1 and negative 1. So negative one is one of my options, which means it is also my answer. And my last question here is going to be equivalent expressions, because it's saying if the expression is equivalent to, how do we deal with this one? So it's saying that it's equivalent to x plus b, and it's telling us that x does not equal b. So first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this and just set them equal to each other like it's telling me is the case. So we've got x squared minus c over x minus b, and it's telling us that this is equal to x plus b. Well, speaking of difference of squares, I'm already starting to see something here because I know that I'm trying to more or less isolate c my instinct is to get rid of the denominator on the left side. And to do that, I would multiply both sides by x minus b, right? So then the left side, we get rid of x minus b. The right side, we get x plus b times x minus b, which as we just discussed is a difference of squared. We know it becomes x squared minus b squared, difference of squares. So now we have x squared minus c is equal to x squared minus b squared. We could eliminate the x squareds, and now we know that negative c is negative b squared, 
or C is B squared. Okay, so we know that C equals B squared. Now it's asking us which of the following could be a value of C. So we know that whatever our value of C is, it has to have a perfect square root because B can be squared to turn into C. So if C was four, we could do two squared is four, right? So A would work. So if we're going through and eliminating, we could keep A, because basically B would equal two, two squared equals four, C would equal four, if that makes sense. Um, six does not have a perfect square root, so B is out. Eight does not have a perfect square root, so C is out. 10 does not have a perfect square root. So just like that, we know our answer is A. If you still have time for more practice, check out this video up here for over an hour of additional study, or the one down below for over four hours of study practice.